Welcome to a brand new episode of the Jam Pack Report today for September the 19th of 2019. Of course, I am Samuel Adams, and five days a week I bring you the hottest gaming news that you need to know right here on the Jam Pack Report. And if you enjoy what I bring to the table, consider clicking that subscribe button on youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media to stay up to date, or of course, subscribe via your favorite podcast service. But today we have some pretty exciting news for fans of Red Dead, specifically the dead portion of the title. Because it looks like Undead Nightmare could be making a return if a new update to Red Dead Online is to be taken at face value. It could be a glitch, but I don't think it's going to be a glitch. Then, Call of Duty Mobile finally has a release date. Fortnite is getting into Batman. Apex Legends Crypto has been found in the game. Destiny 2 Forsaken now has a bit of an added punch with the Forsaken annual pass included with that purchase. The cryptic tweet from PlayStation could be hinting at a brand new state of play. And finally, if you are into tabletop gaming, uh, you are going to be pretty distraught at the end of today's episode because a truck carrying tons and tons of gaming dice spills out onto the highway. Is it dice or is it die? According to Kotaku, it's dice, but we will see. Uh, however, that's the lineup for today's show. We will run through all these stories, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's top gaming news. First off, Red Dead Online players say they are finding zombies in the game. Undead Nightmares Return or Just a Glitch? The recent random and unannounced appearance of a zombie NPC in Red Dead Online has given some fans hope that another undead nightmare, or something like it, is in store for Rockstar's Cowboy Adventure. It could also be a glitch. First, the zombie. Redditor Groats Active spied this white above in the swamp, and others say they have seen dead zombies laying around since last week's update. The manner in which they behave led some players to believe these are glitches, which would not be a first for Red Dead Online. Some have reported zombies with blue skin, leading others to believe this is all a screwed up implementation of something to do with the cholera outbreak. The fact the swamp zombie was upright and not blue, plus that we are about 45 days away from Halloween, gives that side of the speculation a little more weight. However, another player described being led to the swamp by a barking dog, of course, then to the zombie, then ambushed by a bandit. I believe this corpse is part of a trap and glitch to stand up for me. And of course, that is what the In Die the TV show wrote on Reddit. That happened to another player as well, with the body behaving in more glitchy ways. Others have documented similar findings over the past week too, and of course, the article does link out to those. The presence of Red Dead Online, especially as an open-ended microtransaction vehicle, means story-based DLC in Red Dead Redemption 2 is about as likely for it as it had been for Grand Theft Auto V in the six years since launch. The original Undead Nightmare was a premium expansion for Red Dead Redemption, arriving during the week of Halloween 2010. It packed in a ton of new single-player missions, plus side missions and other events, along with a couple of multiplayer game modes. As Red Dead Online and GTA Online shows, such things are possible within the game's sprawling multiplayer suite, which is where Rockstar wants folks' attention, if not in the campaign. We have still reached out to Rockstar to see if there is indeed a glitch going on, or if this is indeed a teaser. And so this is a very interesting uh, piece of news here, because if you look at the image itself, this does not look to be uh, your average run-of-the-mill corpse in Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, this one has glowing eyes, of course. I assume this hasn't been photoshopped in any kind of way, shape, or form. Uh, but if you take that assumption at face value, uh, then this does appear to be pretty much a zombie. Now, of course, if you go over to the Reddit page, this zombie with blue skin as well, uh, this one also appears to be a pretty good confirmation uh, that you are going to be getting some kind of zombie related event coming up on Halloween, uh, which of course I think is very fitting uh, to be quite honest with you because hey, uh, it's a good time of the year to see some new zombies included in your favorite games. Now, I will say, I loved Undead Nightmare, one of the best expansions I have ever played. Uh, not only because it did zombies well, it did zombie hunting well, uh, but it also added a ton of substance to the game. It wasn't just a reskin or something along those lines. It genuinely did add a lot of value to the gameplay experience, and I think that's a big key. Uh, whenever you're talking about any kind of seasonal expansion or seasonal content, it has to actually have a purpose, and Undead Nightmare certainly had a purpose. Uh, so I would love to see the return of Undead Nightmare in Red Dead Online, but even more so, I would love to see Undead Nightmare 2 included with Red Dead Redemption 2 as a premium DLC, uh, and I think a ton of people would absolutely pay for that. Uh, but the potential 
read that online as pretty much, you know, the sky's the limit kind of a situation. Uh, it truly could do whatever anybody wants it to do. It's just like GTA Online, but a little bit less high octane. Uh, but still, the world is sprawling, vast, and has tons and tons of creative potential. But it looks like Undead Nightmare could be making a return. And again, with Halloween only 45 days away, I suppose now, 44, uh, then you could be seeing a big update soon. However, in the meantime, you could be playing Call of Duty Mobile because a release date has been announced and of course it does feature a Battle Royale mode. Call of Duty Mobile is coming to iPhone and Android very soon. Activision and Tencent announced the free-to-play mobile version of its FPS franchise will release on October the 1st on the iOS App Store and Google Play. It will sport a variety of familiar multiplayer modes and maps along with its own BR mode. The launch will be worldwide in all countries that support the stores, except mainland China, Vietnam, and Belgium. You can pre-register through the official site if you do so choose. The announcement came alongside a trailer showing the game in action. COD Mobile will include lots of the usual multiplayer modes like Team Deathmatch, Search and Destroy, and Free For All, along with popular maps like Nuketown, Crash, and Hijacked. You'll also unlock several familiar faces from the series like Soap McTavish and Alex Mason. And while the next big PC and console Call of Duty won't have a Battle Royale mode, this mobile release will. It will pit 100 players against each other in a map specifically designed for the mode. You will be able to play as solos, duos, or squads and use a variety of land, sea, and air vehicles. Quote, we are delivering the definitive first-person action experience on mobile with signature Call of Duty gameplay in the palms of your hands, said Activision Mobile VP Chris Plummer, VP Mobile at Activision. We are bringing together some of the best the franchise has to offer, including Modern Warfare maps like Crash and Crossfire, Black Ops maps like Nuketown and Hijacked, and many more into one epic title. We have tested the game extensively in select territories, and the feedback we have received has helped us refine the experience for October the 1st. Meanwhile, Modern Warfare is also preparing for its own launch in October, and a second beta test will be running soon. Participating can net you a shotgun for use in the game once it launches. And so, Call of Duty Mobile. Now, I want to make it very clear, this is a genuine Call of Duty title. This is not your uh, run-of-the-mill strategy game with the Call of Duty brand stamped on it. No, this is legitimately uh, a Call of Duty game, and I will be the first to say I'm very impressed with what I have seen so far. Now, I have not seen anything uh, that has not been seen on YouTube or on Twitch. I have only seen what has been released to the public. Uh, but genuinely, it brings together Modern Warfare and Black Ops, which is something fans have been wanting for a very long time. It does have the Battle Royale mode. And on top of that, mobile gaming has shifted drastically over the course of just the past three to four years. I mean, now you have uh, genuine baked-in controller compatibility with the newest version of iOS, which changes the game uh, when it comes to playing a game like Call of Duty on the go. I mean, imagine you are working an overnight at work and you've got a 10 hour shift ahead of you and you say, man, there is literally nothing going on. You bust out your DualShock 4, you sync it up to your iPhone 11, whatever you might have, and boom, there you are playing a genuine Call of Duty experience on the go. That's phenomenal. And so I'm very excited to see what the future holds for this. Of course, without a doubt, going to be riddled, riddled, leaking, dripping with microtransactions. But hey, it's to be expected from Activision. And of course, as long as they're only cosmetics, no harm, no foul in my book. I know that's a bit of a controversial statement in today's day and age, uh, but that's just the way that I see it. Uh, but if you do want to dive in, again, the game is going to be coming to iPhone and Android very soon on October the 1st of 2019. If you did want to get in on the day and date, or you can pre-register right now through the official site. But speaking of games you can play for free on mobile, it looks like Fortnite is getting a Batman crossover event, according to data miners. And Tilted Town could become Gotham City. If the unbridled tinkerings of Fortnite's data mining community are to be believed, the game's next faintly preposterous crossover event following on from the likes of John Wick, Stranger Things, and that guy who is also a marshmallow, will see everybody's favorite gloomy superhero Batman join the Battle Royale parade. Data miners, after a good old rummage around Fortnite's innards, have uncovered a host of Batman-related assets squirreled away in the latest build, including a new loading screen featuring moonlit gothic rooftops, plus a Batman banner, spray, and wing-like Bat Glider. 
Ooh, I like that bat glider. At least some of these look to be rewards for a new Batman themed limited time mode and event with associated challenges such as light up different bat signals outside of Gotham City and deal damage to opponents with an explosive batarang. And now that I've seen it written down, I realize I've been incorrectly pronouncing it Batmerang this time, the author says. Thank you for including that in the article. I really appreciate it. A newly uncovered mini-map suggests that all of this is bat-themed, and of course, what? All this bat-themed malarkey will unfold across a version of Tilted Town reworked to assemble Batman's iconic haunt, Gotham City, with unearthed mo models including the likes of a police station, replete with back signal, a city hall, a bank, movie theater, and Wayne Enterprises. And of course, if you do want to check out the event itself, uh, you can definitely check it out. That Saturday the 21st is Batman Day, so prepare for that. I'm sorry about the article. I didn't write it. It's not my fault. Uh, but I will say there are also these Fortnite leaks of a Batman grapnel gun and explosive batarang. Uh, if you did want even more confirmation that there were going to be Batman items added to the game. Uh, and so this is yet another example of the Fortnite marketing machine at work. Uh, because man, it seems like everything this game touches turns to gold. And I will be the first to admit that some of the crossover events in the past might not have been the best fits. Uh, the Stranger Things crossover event. Why? Did we really need that? Was that really fitting for a game meant for 10-year-olds? That's still yet to be decided. But with Batman, totally makes sense. Of course, we've seen a grapple gun in the game before in the form of a plunger with a gun attached to it. Or if you really want to break it down, a gun attached to a plunger. Uh, vice versa, you know what I mean. Uh, but I think the Batman event could be incredibly interesting and could be a very good time for those still toying around in the Battle Royale adventure that is Fortnite. Uh, and it never does cease to amaze me how much creativity uh, the team can sink into this to completely and totally remake a town into Gotham City. Uh, sounds like a very, very fun idea. And I'm excited to see this one played out on streams. Now, I will not be diving into this. Uh, I cannot play Fortnite. I just, I can't bring my myself to do it. But hey, you could. And if you do want to dive in, again, this coming Saturday is going to be Batman Day. But at the same time, I would say you could be seeing maybe this tied into a Halloween crossover event, uh, something along those lines. Maybe you could be seeing the return of uh, not necessarily the Avengers theme, but maybe a superhero theme into the world of Fortnite, or maybe even a DC Universe theme uh, that is brought in as a crossover. That would be neat. A Justice League crossover with the new uh, Suicide Squad movie or something coming out. Uh, that could be an interesting crossover as well. But we will see shortly enough what they do have in store over there at Epic Games. But I'll tell you what they've got in store at the other Battle Royale, Apex Legends, because Crypto has been spotted in the game. Respawn Entertainment has dropped what's perhaps the biggest teaser for Apex Legends, Crypto. Crypto is largely assumed to be the next Apex Legends character thanks to a long campaign of teasers that kicked off before the start of Season 2, the game's current season. Throughout Season 2, however, hints have been getting stronger, with every seasonal event leading players to uncover more about Crypto, the game's most mysterious hero yet. Now players actually manage to spot Crypto in the game's world. The Apex Legends subreddit is full of videos of people's encounters with Crypto, who can be seen in labs, east behind protective glass working on something. To reach them, you need to kick open a door inside, which leads to a room where you can briefly watch them. When they are spotted, they quickly escape through a conveniently placed nearby exit, and on the screen above him, you can see something called World's Edge being referred to as the key, with an image that Reddit user Exo Madera TV points out is identical to a Titanfall space elevator, the same one you can see from the map Eden in Titanfall 2. And of course, Crypto's drone is also in the room with him, which indicates that some of the earlier leaks are accurate to a certain degree at least. One other hint Respawn dropped this week is having the banners displaying Top Squad etc. and King's Canyon shut down, which is also believed to be Crypto's work. It's worth keeping in mind that Crypto may not, in fact, be the character's name. That's just what they were referred to in Apex Legends files. The longer Respawn teases the character, however, the better the name sticks, which could create a bit of a pushback if their final name ends up being something else. Crypto, or whatever the name is, should arrive with Season 3 and does not yet have an official start date. Season 2 ends October the 1st, so expect the next season to follow within a few days. 
And so we have, of course, the video itself, which shows Crypto uh, hanging out in his little scientific dungeon uh, over here, waiting to uh, infiltrate the game itself. Uh, but I think it's a pretty cool way to tease the newest character in the game. I love it whenever you start to see these little subtle things. In a way, it's almost like the Undead Nightmare tease that we talked about at the top of the show. Uh, because you don't necessarily have a confirmation that anything is happening at all, but at the same time, you know something's going on. And that's the best way to announce anything. I feel like uh, oftentimes the gaming industry can be very cut and dry in today's day and age with just press announcements and all of a sudden a trailer is put up on YouTube or something like that. Uh, but to reward people that explore the game, to find new things within the game, uh, and even to just uncover uh, little secrets within the code uh, sometimes, I love that kind of concept. And so this is just another example of that. Now, I will say they need to name this character Crypto without a doubt. That just needs to happen. Uh, but if they don't, they should because Crypto just, it works now. Well, we're, we've established this, now it's Crypto. Uh, but again, the new season, Season 2, should wrap up on October the 1st. So expect Season 3 to drop a brand new character, some new map changes, maybe some new weapons, one or two, uh, sometime towards the beginning of October. But until then, you could be playing Destiny 2 Forsaken before the release of Shadowkeep, which comes out on October the 1st as well. But now, Forsaken includes the Forsaken Annual Pass. It's much cheaper than it was. With D2 Shadowkeep and New Light still a couple of weeks away, Bungie has made a significant change to D2 Forsaken. The studio announced on Twitter that the Annual Pass for Forsaken, which includes three seasonal DLC updates, is now free for everyone who owns the expansion. That's a good deal, and good news for anyone who owns the Forsaken expansion, where Cade 6 gets it, but took a pass on the pass. The new Forsaken Complete Edition, including the annual pass, is $25 compared to the original pricing of $40 for Forsaken and $35 for the annual pass. And of course, this will also be on Steam on October the 1st. Bungie previously said it would bundle all pre-Shadowkeep content, including Forsaken, into a single package for $40, which, as you can see in the studio's Twitter feed, resulted in some confusion. Is that bundle being replaced, or will the $25 price be increased on October the 1st when Shadowkeep and the free New Light Editions go live? It turns out that it's all quite simple. A Bungie rep confirmed that the $40 bundle is now off the table. Once October the 1st rolls around, when Shadowkeep and New Light are live, $25 will get you everything that came before Shadowkeep, and you can go from there as you would like. And so, basically, they've dropped the price of everything pre-Shadowkeep by the expected price of $40 down to $25, uh, which is a pretty good deal. Now, I will say, when it comes to D2, it's a game where it definitely is in your favor to have all of the content that you can possibly have. Uh, the most up-to-date and recent content makes you feel like you are definitely in the thick of the community. But that being said, if you do want to drop $25 on Destiny 2 Forsaken and its annual pass, you get everything from D2 Year 1. You get everything from the Forsaken expansion, which is pretty much Year 2. Uh, and on top of that, all of the multiplayer, which is, of course is everything you see on streams right now in Forsaken, it's an incredible amount of content that you really do get for $25. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hours of content already bundled together with that $25 purchase. And then if you enjoy what that does for you, uh, then Shadowkeep is coming out, which of course is going to add tons of new content to the game and pretty much prime uh, the franchise for its movement into Destiny 3 on the next generation of consoles. But that's just my two cents on that one. Uh, fantastic deal, phenomenal deal, I would say. And if you do want to dive in and get one game for $25 that is going to give you a ton of gameplay, Destiny 2 could be the one. So if you do want to pick up the new Forsaken bundle, which does include the Forsaken annual pass as well as the collection, you can go into your GameStop, your local mom and pop shop, and say, hey, I want the Forsaken complete collection. And they will give it to you for $25. If they don't, contact Bungie. They won't give you a refund, and they'll probably say, why are you calling me? But, I mean, you could always try, right? Right. Anyways, rumor has it this cryptic tweet from PlayStation is hinting at a state of play. There is a lot of speculation around at the moment, suggesting another state of play is right around the corner. Sony's Nintendo Direct-style broadcasts are hard to predict, but it certainly feels like we are due for the next one pretty soon. It has been quite a while. Many are tying it to The Last of Us Part II event happening later this month. Now PlayStation UK seems to be teasing something with this unusual tweet, which says, Beep, 
in between two asterisks and a giant blue button with a finger pointing towards the blue button. At first, it's reminiscent of the famous beep tweet from Cyberpunk 2077's account, but thinking about it, this could be hinting at a state of play. The presentations usually start with the PS4 startup beep sound effect with this tweet emulating that. Of course, it might not amount to anything, but all of the talk of a new state of play has us thinking this could be a teaser, and hopefully we will find out soon enough. Of course, we have been talking about a big new The Last of Us Part 2 event coming up in the next couple of weeks, and so I think a state of play would be very fitting for that time period. Of course, we've been talking about this on the show for the past few weeks, where Sony has been very quiet, uncomfortably quiet, uh, over the course of the past few, really, months uh, about what is coming in the world of PlayStation, and that's to be expected towards the end of a generation, uh, because quite frankly, everybody is focused on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox uh, success. And so is there really any kind of reason to focus on what is to come on the PlayStation 4? Absolutely, we need to know what's happening here because there are still tons of big games coming uh, for the PlayStation itself. Of course, you have stuff like Ghost of Tsushima, which I think is going to be pushed back to the next generation. That's just me, though. Uh, then, of course, you have stuff like The Last of Us Part II. Uh, you have whatever Insomniac's working on, which could be coming out sooner or later, depending on who you believe. Uh, but there are tons and tons of projects still set to be released on the PlayStation 4, and to leave fans out in the cold on it is probably not the best move, if I'm being quite honest with you, especially considering how great Xbox and Microsoft are doing in 2019 when it comes to stuff like Game Pass, when it comes to stuff like bringing all these companies on and creating exclusive uh, content uh, for Xbox on console. It's very impressive to see. Uh, and so I would love to see a state of play giving us details about what is happening with, of course, The Last of Us Part Two. I need that. Uh, but also what's coming with the rest of PlayStation's lineup. So we will see. Of course, keep an eye on the official PlayStation Twitter feeds for the newest and hottest updates. But until then, you could be playing some D&D. But you're not going to be playing with these dice. Because a truck carrying gaming dice spills out onto the highway, rolling a perfect 756,000, according to Kotaku. On Friday, September the 13th, a truck bound for the Georgia-based tabletop and video game company Trivium Studios took a turn too sharply, spilling 2,116,000 gaming dice onto Interstate 77 excuse me, 75, and Atlanta in what could be the biggest unintentional dice roll ever. According to Trivium Studios community manager, speaking to Kotaku about the incident, the truck was carrying three pallets of Chessex six-sided gaming dice for use in an unannounced tabletop game. Approximately half of the truck's load wound up strewn across the busy highway on Friday afternoon. Atlanta Hero Highway Emergency Response Operators units helped Trivium employees clean up the mess using brooms and shovels to salvage what they could. While losing a substantial amount of pricey dice isn't great. Trivium's rep says the company, which plans to unveil the game associated with all these dice closer to its planned early 2020 launch, maintains a positive attitude. Though unfortunate it happened, nobody got hurt and we now own an unofficial world record for the largest dice roll in history. Nice. Considering the average roll of two six-sided dice, around seven and approximately 216,000 dice were rolled, Trivium estimates the roll totaled 756,000. The truck was undamaged, having made its saving throw. And so, here is the uh, video for the largest dice roll ever, uh, courtesy of the Trivium team, because man, that would suck, wouldn't it? Uh, however, you can't help but laugh. In the moment, not funny at all, because you have this giant investment, you have all these die on your way. Is it dice or die? I'm still on the fence about that one. But you have this on your way to the newest uh, game that your studio is pumping out, and then all of a sudden, strewn across the highway, scattered about. At the same time, Hilarious to see all these gaming dice on the highway, uh, but excited to see what they do pump out towards the beginning of 2020. So, hey, if you are into the tabletop gaming, go give Trivium the follow uh, and keep up to date with what they've got going on. Of course, Trivium Studios uh, on the LinkedIn page. You can find more about that uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Highly recommend giving them a look. But that does round up today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. Of course, if you are brand new to the show, thank you so much for checking it out. And I do hope you enjoy what I bring to the table. And of course, I do bring it to the table. Of course, that being the Jam Pack Report, five days a week, Monday through Friday, right here on YouTube.com slash Samuel Adams Media or a podcast feed near you. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I will talk to you soon and peace.